Unit 7, Day 3, Trigonometric Ratios. Trigonometric ratio is a ratio of the lengths of two sides of a right triangle. Below in the diagram, it says let triangle ABC be a right triangle. So here we have this triangle ABC, and it has this right angle at angle C. The sine, the cosine, and the tangent of the acute angle A are defined as follows. So we're going to use this angle A as a reference point. And as you can see, we've labeled that this is a side that is opposite from angle A. This is the side that's opposite from the right angle, which we always call the hypotenuse. So we're going to call this side the side adjacent to angle A because it's not the one that's opposite, it's not the hypotenuse, and it's another side that is just next to angle A. So when we talk about the sine of angle A, that's equal to the ratio of the side opposite from angle A over the hypotenuse. So that means this side, labeled X, over the hypotenuse, Z. Likewise, cosine of A is equal to the ratio of the side adjacent to angle A, the side Y, over the hypotenuse, which is Z. The tangent of angle A is equal to the ratio of the side opposite from angle A, labeled X, over the side adjacent to angle A, labeled Y. Now we're going to use these a lot. Sine, cosine, and tangent are also found on our calculator, which we will use the calculators in class as well. Now we're going to use this acronym SOCATOA to help us remember all of our trig functions. So the first part, this stands for the sine equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So way, the way that this is going to look is the sine of an angle measure, we'll just call it x, is going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Next we have ka, which is the cosine equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So we have the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Then lastly we have toa, which stands for tangent equal to the opposite side, tangent of the angle, equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. So you need to remember SOCATOA, sine, cosine, tangent, and then the O, H, and A stand for opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Okay, in this one we're going to use the diagram to find the trigonometric ratio, so we're just going to do a little practice. Now to help us, I, I want to start us off by looking at SOCATOA, okay? Now, you're going to want to write this on all of your worksheets, your quizzes, your tests to help you remember. Now, it'll also be helpful to know what it stands for. So, since we just learned it, I'm going to show it to you here, okay? So, we want to take this one at a time, and we want to look at angle A first. So, from the perspective of angle A, let's label the side. This one is opposite from the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. Now, from angle A, this is the opposite side. So that means this one has to be the adjacent. So the way that we're going to label this is we're going to work through sine of angle A equals what? So the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So you want to look at the opposite side, J, and put that over the hypotenuse, which is L. Okay. Then, cosine. Cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of A, look at angle A, the adjacent side is K over the hypotenuse, which is L. Then, we'll take a look at tangent of angle A. Tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So from angle A, the opposite is side J, and that needs to go over the adjacent, which is K. Now I want you to pause right now, and I want you to try to find the sine of B, cosine of B, and tangent of B. Then after you think you've found it, go ahead and press play, and then you can check your answers with mine. So now we're going from the perspective of angle B. And so the first thing we want to do is check our labels again. 
this side is opposite from the right angle, so it's still the hypotenuse. But now, from angle B, this side is the opposite. So we want to change this to the opposite, and that means this side is going to become our adjacent. That's going to switch because we've switched which angle we're looking from. So when we put this in, the sine of angle B is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of angle B is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of angle B is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. I hope you got all those answers correct. Okay, And then we'll move on to another type of problem. Here, instead of giving variables, it actually gives us side lengths. So it asks us to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the acute angles. Now there are two acute angles in every right triangle, so we're going to have to do this twi twice. Then it asks us to express each value as a decimal rounded to four decimal places. So the first part we're going to do the same as we did before. Um, let's just take one angle at a time. We'll start with D. 5 is opposite from the right angle, so this is our hypotenuse, and then this is the opposite side of our angle D, so that means this is our adjacent. Okay, So we're going to use SOHCAHTOA, and then we're going to write the sine of D is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And let's continue. The cosine of angle D is going to be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of angle D is, is going to be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. Okay. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and do the second part. Express each value as a decimal rounded to four decimal places. So you're just going to put in the calculator 4 divided by 5, and your answer is actually 0 0.8. Now, it doesn't go past four decimal places, so this is just going to be your final answer. So again, we go to the calculator, 3 divided by 5 to get a final answer, and that gives you 0 0.6. So again, that doesn't go to four decimal places, so that's your final answer. And then tangent of D, 4 divided by 3 is going to give us 1.333 repeating. So we just cut that off at four decimal places, rounded. Okay. So again, just like on the page before, I want you to find the sine of F cosine of f and tangent of f. Um, pause this, find those, and then press play again when you're ready so that we can check our answers. Okay? Okay, so now that you're back, again, we want to go back and change our focus to angle f. The hypotenuse stays the same. Now this is the opposite side from angle f. So this side becomes the adjacent. Okay? The sine of f, you should have gotten 3 over 5, which is equal to 0 0.6. The cosine of f, you should have gotten 4 over 5, which is equal to 0 0.8. And the tangent of f, you should have gotten 3 over 4, which equals 0 0.75. Hopefully you got those correct. Okay. Now let's look at these two examples. Uh, here's one, and then we'll look at one more just like this. It asks us to find the value of each variable and to round to the nearest tenth. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our new best friend, SOHCAHTOA, to help us out. And to start off, we want to use the angle that we're given, and let's label our sides. Again, 10 is opposite from the right angle, so this is our hypotenuse. 36, the angle that we have is opposite from x, so here's our opposite side. And then this last side is going to be our adjacent side. Okay. Now that we have that, we're going to decide um, which variable to solve for first. It's not going to matter which one you solve for first, just pick one at a time. So let's start with x. When we're solving for x, that's going to be the opposite side. And then you also want to use the other side length you're given, which is the 10. Okay. So we want to use our opposite and hypotenuse. So you're going to look over here at SOHCAHTOA, at the second parts of it. Which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? That's this one. So, so you have to remember that sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So that's exactly what we're going to write. 
sine of the angle 36 is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Once you set up that equation, we're just going to solve this like we've been solving other equations since before Algebra 1. To get this x by itself, we need to get rid of this 10. So the inverse operation of dividing by 10 is going to be multiplying by 10 so that those cancel out. Now the x is by itself. But the problem is you can't just multiply the right side by 10, you also have to multiply this side by 10. So on the left side you have 10 times the sine of 36. Now at this point, once you get here, this is just calculator work. And we'll talk about this in class as well, because it might be the first time you've seen these buttons on the calculator. You're just going to plug that in exactly into your calculator. 10 times, and there's a button for sign. You're going to put in 36 and hit enter, and the answer that you'll get is 5.9. So there's our first answer. This side length of x is equal to 5.9. Now, let's go through and solve for y. If we want to solve for y, I would say it's easier, again, to use the other side length that you're given, because that's a nice whole number versus this side, which is a decimal. So let's use the y and let's use the 10. That's the adjacent and hypotenuse. So we come over here to SOHCAHTOA, look for the trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse, which is this one, cosine. So we'll set up our equation. Cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. That's our y over 10. So again, we need to use our algebra skills and solve to get the y by itself. We need to get rid of this 10. So multiply both sides by 10. This side cancels, and now we're left with 10 times the cosine of 36 equals y. And then once you get here, where the variable is by itself, you just throw that in the calculator very carefully, and you get 8.1 as your final answer. Now, the way to check to make sure this is correct is you know that x squared plus y squared has to equal 10 squared. So if you use Pythagorean theorem to check, it should get very, very close to being equal. Since these are decimals, that means we rounded, but it should be close. Let's work through one more example. We'll start off with our friend Sokotoa. Now again, let's go through labeling. Here's our angle. Here's our hypotenuse. This is our opposite side. And this is our adjacent. So let's, this time we're always going to be using the opposite. And let's solve for x first. So adjacent and opposite. Adjacent and opposite, that's going to be tangent. So we set up the tangent of the angle 64 is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. Now, this one's a little different algebraically because the x is on the bottom. So this is going to be a couple more steps. We want to multiply both sides by x to get rid of this fraction. So you have x times the tangent of 64 is equal to 8. Now, to get the x by itself, we want to divide both sides by the tangent of 64. Then this cancels out. Then we're left with x is equal to 8 divided by the tangent of 64. So when we put this in the calculator, you'll get x is equal to 3.9 as your final answer. Now when we're solving for y, we need to use y, the hypotenuse, and we're going to use that 8, the opposite side again. So we use sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now we run into that same problem with y on the bottom, so we're going to multiply both sides by y. These cancel out, and you have y times the sine of 64 is equal to 8. Now in order to isolate the y, we want to divide both sides by sine of 64. So this cancels out, and we have y is equal to 8 divided by the sine of 64. And when you put that in the calculator, you'll get y equals 8.9. That's it.